Hey there. So today what we're going to do is we're going to create this ambient occlusion shader thing that does a number of things. One, it paints uh, white on any angles that are convex, and then it'll paint uh, streaks or leaks like this and add some ambient occlusion and some concavity. Um, it'll darken it up. And then what we can do with this texture is then we can use it as masks inside of our, our um, painting package or even within Mari if you want. So, and then at the end, of course, once we're done with this, we're going to bake it into a texture. Awesome. Let us start by deleting this shader and creating it anew. Okay. So here we go. We have nothing. So by selecting nothing, remember that in Moto you select everything. So let's press M to create a new shader. And I don't even care what this is named right now because this is just an example. I'm going to click OK and then select this material. Now, the reason why I want to select it is because if I create a new layer, it's going to go directly on top and it's going to go into this mask material. OK, so I'll go to add layer, go to processing and constant. So let's start there. Let's start at least with some kind of color that we can work towards or work on top of. OK then press the equals here so that I only have to type in one value 0 0.5 and as you can see it applied it to all the three values here and then just click anywhere okay so we have a 50% gray shader uh, or color applied to this material and then what we're gonna do is anything that's uh, wearing the material out so any kind of edge wear is gonna be white and any kind of dirt and occlusion that's applied onto it is going to be darkened now, there's two ways to approach this material. You can either separate all those different uh, processes out and export different textures uh, separately so that you can have more control when you're texturing, or you can just do it all at once. It's up to you. In my case, I'm just going to show you how to do it once, and the rest should be relatively self-explanatory. Okay, so we have a constant color, and next we need to put something on top of it. So go back into Add Layer and Processing and go to Occlusion. And this has changed color significantly. The reason why it changed is because uh, by default it's set to normal and it's not blending with the color underneath. It's literally replacing it. If I make this go to multiply, for example, then it's going to now blend with whatever was underneath. Now we're just going to be using the uniform for now. And this really is kind of like, the, like a, an AO or an ambient occlusion map. So let us increase the number of rays and then go directly to the occlusion distance. And you're going to start noticing that there's some occluding happening uh, where objects meet. So they're darkening up a tiny bit. There you go. Awesome. So this is our occlusion. Next up, let's go back to add layer and processing and back to occlusion again. And let's change its mode to do something slightly different. And let's make a downslope. Once again, you apply it, you're not seeing much change. Uh, let's go back and add some occlusion rays, increase the occlusion distance significantly. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, now this right now, you're starting to see some downslope being painted on, but it really doesn't look very nice yet. So let's add some variance. So right now, let's increase this value and Anything's better than nothing. And then let's decrease the variance scale. And this should hopefully give you a more interesting look. And at the same time, if you want, you could increase the spread angle and you know, just play around with some of this stuff here. Oh, and another thing I should mention is that if you go down to here, you can actually change the bias to make things a little bit more contrasty or less. Again, up to you. Okay, let's add more variance here. So now if you lower the variance scale, these streaks are going to get very, very fine. So sometimes you actually might want to increase them. Right? The only problem is that if you increase them too much, it's pretty much blurring the end result out. See? Now... There's some very, very fine details within there. If I go too low. Okay, cool. So we have a downslope. 
And you know what? Let's set this to multiply as well. Okay, so now we have an AL, we have a downslope. Next up is to do a sort of, well, you'll see. So back to processing, occlusion, and let's change this mode now to convexity. Okay, and now we seem to be getting some rendering, like some black lines around some of the edges that have a harsh angle. Now, for this map, I actually want the edge wear to be white, and that's basically what I want. I want, I want the that color to be there and then the rest of it to be darkened so that when I multiply it I well you'll you'll see okay let's change this color from black to white and this color from white to yeah there you go or rather from black to white and white to black so now we have the inverse result of what we had previously and now if I go to add we're going to get something like this. Cool. So now all of these layers are now blending together. Beautiful. And once again, add more occlusion rays. And maybe the occlusion distance can increase a tiny bit to give us a slightly stronger re rendering of the edges because they might have been a little bit too, um, too subtle. And variance scale, not as important on this shader but you know you can apply it if you wish and usually what might be a good idea for this one here is to play around with the bias and gain so let's increase the bias and as you can see it's brightening up a lot sometimes it might be a little too much okay you know what let's leave it here next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bake this result into a texture map let us do the whole bake down to texture. So in order for us to bake all this result into a texture, we first need a texture. Okay, and it needs to, like the way it's gonna work is it's going to take the color and then apply this and then apply this and then this layer and eventually going to render into a texture. So let us go to add layer, image map, and make a new texture. And you can place it wherever you want. And in my case, I'm just going to make it 2K. It'll render faster. Okay, awesome. And before we start doing any kind of rendering, we should go into System Preferences and make sure that when we render, go into under Rendering, Final Rendering, click on that, and make sure that your render threads are set appropriately to whatever kind of processor you have. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're going to have way too few buckets, and it's going to take a very, very long time to do the actual render. So in my case, I have 12 threads, and I just want to use 10 so that I can actually do other things uh, while this is rendering. Okay, I'm going to click X to escape. And now, in order for you to bake into a texture, first of all, uh, as far as this shader is concerned, I want to make sure that this texture is not um, adding to the result, right? I want to make sure that all this goes into the overall result. So I have to make sure that it, this paint is turned off, so I have to disable the texture, but it is what I'm going to actually bake into. So go to right click and then go into bake to texture and hopefully you're going to see something bake. And you know what, let me just resize it down to this window. My working resolution is much greater than this. <laughs> 